everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Good news for anybody who was enjoying clipping and maybe, you know, hopefully for all other clipping channels, hopefully they get the same resolution. Uh, notable Shy Lily Clipper, uh, Pierre, finally gets their channel fully restored and comics publicly i lived b uh this is because as we all know shy lily clipper uh specifically called shy lily clips and i think that's probably one of the reasons why uh youtube went after them it is named after the vtuber that they are clipping which is perfectly normal but for them having that name in there i guess is just impersonation but in this case, they kind of messed up because the person there is actually a employee of Shy Lily. It's a paid clipper of Shy Lily. So they, uh, you know, aren't actually putting it out there. They always put out that this is a fan clipper. This is not Shy Lily. They always even put in their descriptions that way to make sure people don't think that it's actually Shy Lily doing clipping or Shy Lily themselves. Anyone with a brain would know that it's not Shy Lily. So right here, we have what they put out. And first and foremost, I want to thank everyone for their support a special thanks to shy lily and boiska who are always here to support me daily and reassure me that no matter what they will help me get through this also want to thank every content creator that engaged about the channel being terminated and went through the effort of sending some support obviously last but not least anyone that interacted with anything to the situation you guys are amazing your support means the world to me and you are the reason i started this and kept going when i fell down thank you so much tldr i lived b and this is shy lily clips Fan channel. They call it fan. Shy Lily Clips fan. It's freaking marked as a fan channel. It's not marked as directly Shy Lily. My guess is that they thought it was an impersonator or they their algorithm or whatever. Maybe it got reported as impersonation um, was because Shy Lily's in there, which of course is going to be there because you want to know who's being clipped. And uh, you have, you know, Shy Lily Clips in there, but they mark it as a fan channel. And you'll find the best clip compilations, etc. here. That's 319k subscriber. That's why it was a darn shame for it to get shut down the way it did. Uh, Pierre's comment on the post. Uh, Considering what the Clipper went through, could re totally relate to the I, I lived B type of thing going on there. It says, hey, everyone just got in the post. Thanks for the advice and words of support. Um, to give some context, I got an email from a partner manager at YouTube that gave me the ability to change the channel name and include fan channel into the name. Once I got it done, their policy team had to review the new channel name <clears throat> and handled to confirm it was enough to restore it fully. Everything happened yesterday. I'm aware that I probably got this chance because of the fuss on Twitter and the first tweet of Lady Support. Hope in the future they will give the chance to do it for more people to bring back their channel. Once everything is sorted out fully, I'll be transferring ownership of the channel to Shy Lily. I don't want anything similar to happen again. And if I happen to not be able to keep doing clips, I don't want the channel to be left to die. Once the channel was restored, I got on a call with Lily and her manager and they offered me to hire me, give me the full ads revenues and keep supporting me in the future. They even offered to buy the channel, but I refused because I make a living thanks to them allowing me to clip her, it didn't feel right to me. Once the ownership transfer will be done, it will go back to the original name, since it can't be impersonation if it's her channel. Thanks again for everyone for sharing what happened here and being so supportive. You guys made the first post, post blow up and cross us posted it to Asmund Gold subreddit. We think it's probably why things moved. I'm incredibly lucky and I'll not let this chance go to waste. Y'all are awesome. So yeah, well, a lot of times you gotta, you know, gotta grease the wheels a bit. And in the VTuber space and in the YouTube space, greasing the wheels means you have, you know, larger creators out there giving you that support. So glad for them, glad for Pierre, glad for um, that they are going to be transferring it to Shy Lily and doing the fan clips thing. And this is, this shows a lot of uh, the kind of character that Pierre has, the person who is running the Shy Lily Clips channel, was running the Shy Lily Clips channel. Now it's going to be transferred to Shy Lily herself, um, but he's still doing clips. Pierre is showing what he's made of and he's made of the good stuff so to speak as reported by myself and others in the vtuber community at least in the vtuber news community hex haywire has decided to graduate and that was already as everyone knows with niti sanji a long running thing they have had many things in their pl where they're like they're mentioning things like they just don't give an f anymore the rain is starting that type of stuff as we know We've been looking at this PL, and PL seems to care less and less, and he seems to care less and less. Um, he recently has had uh, content, you know, like where, where he's communication, where uh, he's talked to Michimochi V, 
where he's just, you know, been less caring about what's going on. Uh, Enna has been doing the same things. It's basically no one's at the wheelhouse when it comes to the management and they are just doing whatever the heck they want. They're winning uh, the I don't give an F award, uh, you know, war. Let's catch up in life type beat i am sorry then kuro k9 kuro is uh you know the the, the the deadbeat thingy hey if you're gonna be graduating soon then why not just ignore the rules and interact with past livers and an eg account you're already leaving soon anyways and i don't know though either she stopped caring at this point assessing how far she can push the rules or she's also graduating soon it'd be interesting to see large graduations happen again and again of course like i said only if the talents want to i prefer that from terminations because no matter what you have to say about all the different people. It, if they are happy in the company that they're happy in, good. If it's affecting their mental health, get the hell out of there. Anna, one by far, has me the most curious is if she left. I think it caused multiple close friends to start making other plans. Ilira would probably stay another year, but wouldn't event would eventually leave once any close friends of hers persuade her to leave as well. Millie, in my opinion, would absolutely jump ship with Anna or, or not long after. Even if she's someone that claims every once in a while, uh, she'd ask her chat randomly if they'd still like her without her hat and go quiet, despite the majority saying yes. Uh, Petra and Reimu, I could see being the longest stay in the scenario, both have relatively unaffected by the whole thing. Like, Reimu and Petra seem happy. They seem happy where they are, and I'm happy for them, because they seem to really be enjoying themselves recently. Of course, there's always complaints. Even Hololive has complaints, but um, the fact that they're happy at what they're doing, it makes me happy that they are there. Leaving may not be very tempting yet, but if one of their friends did make a comeback as an indie, I think they'd probably do the same after a few months pass and the queue pops up. Like, if it opens up, then yeah, there does seem to be a queue. Really does seem to be a queue. On a different note, the only thing I'll miss about Hex is PFP always making me need to crack my neck. However, in the middle of writing this, I remember that his PL has the same PFP, so never mind. Um, to interact with him uh, post Niji will be one of the biggest mistakes. Guy is too radioactive with his deranged fan base and his lack of guts to control them. He tried to control them recently, just to be fair. He tried to control them recently. Um, a lot of people thought it was too little too late, but at the very least, he tried something. I wish him the best of luck. I hope that he changes in the future, and I hope that he goes on a kind of, uh, not a squeaky clean atmosphere, but, you know, cleaning up his act, because that will net him the best benefit. As I have said before, um, treat these rants and these vents that these people have with, uh, you know, uh, healthy skepticism, a healthy grain of salt, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this person is just saying what I've always said, which is, if Hex graduates, if, it's, if the graduation wasn't being forced by, you know, mental health issues, or anything like that, then it's always something positive to see that someone wants to move on to do something else. Um, if, we, if Hex graduates decided carefully or his emotional things, if learned from his mistake, if he learns from this mistake and sets the good boundaries in his next life, it would be great. But he didn't fix his fandom's problem because he graduated in the future. He would do same mistakes or quit his VTuber career. I just feel sorry for uh, he was S assaulted when he was a kid. Um, he's become a child trapped in an adult body. That does, those type of situations do make it hard for someone to mature. It does a lot to the psychological well-being of the person throughout life, whether they get therapy for it or not. So it could be a reasoning behind him being kind of, you know, immature in a lot of things he does. It could just be his personality overall. But, um, or if he rebirth back to his PL, I pray for him not to be, uh, you know, destroyed by his parasocial fans. It depends on him becoming better himself. Um, it says, personally, I pray that he stops doing those KMS jokes if he really cares for mental health in his next life to avoid parasocial content with his future fans. I mean, some parasocialism is unavoidable because you get connected with people. Like I have been uh, on the low end of parasocial with a lot of Hollow Life people. I'm very happy for the person behind the mask when they have successes, like having their concerts, having an outside concert, like Watame joining the world tour thing. I am so proud of her for doing that. You know, those types of things. Those types of things are what is normal when you start you know kind of stalking people and going too far and wishing you know to be in bed with them or any of that kind of stuff that goes a little too far on that end um some people have a little sympathy when he shit on zion which makes true he did say some negative things to zion uh, he hasn't apologized for that either so that is something that a lot of people are not going to forgive him for because of the fact he hasn't apologized for it he hasn't shown remorse he hasn't seemed to even care at that at that point. I saw some people are like too little, too late. He trashed like his fan base, being traumatized in the past doesn't excuse his actions. He willingly cultivated a cult of doxers, harassers, and bullies. Said cult came out of uh, today in full force as if they would, wouldn't just move on to the next BFA VTuber they can catch. 
Exactly. So they're going to be that way. The fan base is going to be that way, unfortunately, because he kind of cultivated that for himself. It's not safe or healthy to do that, but everyone can choose what they want to do when it comes to their own fan base because it is theirs. Someone sarcastically bidding farewell to Hex Haywire here. A little bit of a meme, you know, uh, <laughs> they really are treating him like he's passing away. Holy crap. A little bit of a meme kind of thing going on here with him uh meaning that he's he's passing away uh i think he did say something on his hex haywire account about when i said until death i meant until death and this is basically them memeing on it it's like yep you're dead now buddy <laughs> type of thing just taking a look at the memes as they always pop up also kurosanji sending off this guy when he sandy sub didn't even bother like yeah because kurosanji sub has been more even though they meme on him they've been more uh into like sending him farewell wishes and all that kind of stuff even being positive compared to what Nidhi Sanji is doing. This is just an update. In other news, I will take this as other news that could affect VTubers. Japanese government has issued a giant earthquake warning. Japanese VTubers will be affected if an earthquake occurs. Everybody's going to be affected. Everybody in the area will absolutely be affected. In Japan, a major earthquake occurred earlier in the western part of the country, in Kyushu. The Japanese government meteorological agency responded by issuing a warning that the probability of a huge Nankai trough earthquake is increasing. Nankai trough earthquake is a massive earthquake that is predicted to occur in the southern waters of Japan. Epicenter is adjacent to an urban area of Japan if it were to occur, likely to cause much more damage than 2011 earthquake. Basically, this would be, my guess, somewhere around a 7.0 or more earthquake. Our concern would be the significant impact to Japanese VTubers. We should keep in mind that we will be on earthquake alert for the next few days. And this is a basic running of uh, what it is, is when there are large earthquakes, they tend to affect other faults in the area. They tend to kind of be a cascading effect on other faults. You'll have tons of aftershocks, usually, and sometimes other faults that may not have been so active become more active when uh, there is an adjacent shaking because, you know, it might shake them free a little bit. It might cause them to, to create even smaller earthquakes, etc. if it's not a huge fault. But this uh, trough, Nankai trough, seems to be a really big one. Let's hope no one gets hurt and the damage is minimal. Hopefully so, but JP is used, so used to earthquakes, they know what to do. They also have an early warning system. To kind of warn you they try to warn you it's anywhere from five to ten seconds which is a lifesaver if it's going to be a huge earthquake and you get the warning you know to get the heck out of there because japan will warn you major earthquake coming uh like major shaking uh felt in this area uh you know go to cover or go outside or something like that they do that it says the buildings seem to have held up pretty well all considered good example of why building codes are so much stronger around the pacific ring of fire they're perfectly they're pretty lucky it wasn't a large tsunami though Miyazaki is built on a low-lying coastal plain. So this is the, the trough area. This is the big trough area, the main area that we're talking about down here. This is the Nankai trough. Uh, the, the Kyushu area over here on the left side that you see, that was where the main earthquake was. And since it's very close to the Nankai trough, they're saying that there could be an issue there. And anyone living in these areas, which is a large portion of Japan, uh, VTubers, Hopefully it's not Oren China in that area, uh, but anyone living in that area, holy crap, there's even more risk. 2011 earthquake damage because of tsunami, not the earth. Earthquake 7.1 uh, in magnitude. I'm from Gifu. I don't even know how had an earthquake if not for the TV. 7.1 magnitude earthquake is a major earthquake. Um, it, you know, any kind of those things, anything really above a six, I think, is a major earthquake. Uh, and you're definitely going to feel, definitely going to feel the earthquake if it is anything above like a five, I think is where it becomes humanly perceptible. Uh, six is, it's more than enough shaking, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so hopefully they all do well. Hopefully they are safe and sound and will continue to be another channel. Uh, from another company VTuber suddenly recorded CCV of 140k. Raised suspicions that Nidhi did the Coconola test, Coconala test before Koshien and Toa Live crushed. Um, it seems very sudden spike. Usually you have the, you know, little bit of spikes here and there. And then, um, you know, it goes up and down. It kind of is moving up and down because people come, people go, people leave, people stay. Uh, sometimes YouTube itself has a weird way of uh, taking away views viewers and giving them back like within seconds and it's weird it's weirdness like you can have chatting a lot of chatting going on on youtube and then it'll mark you as like one or two people when you see that it's like three four five six people actually chatting it'll mark it as one or two because of weird ways that the algorithm works this looks like it was someone attempting botting it might be a side character doing it might not be actually them doing it might actually might actually be the company doing it because they don't gain anything from doing that usually obviously because if they started at zero and all of a sudden have 140k those 140k empty views they don't 
uh, go for ad revenue. They don't go for super chats because, you know, they're not going to be super chatting. They don't go for anything like that. So those views are pretty much dead. Uh, they're not lead livers, but VTubers from a Chinko slot machine company called Haruruna. Uh, to be honest, they were minor and not known until the CCV anomaly. Since the CCV behavior is similar to that Niji Sanji streams, it seems like they're being suspected of the Kokonala. Kokonala, I guess, is a botting farm that is being used. Um, people are, you know, putting tinfoil hats, saying that Niji Sanji is doing this to see what would happen if they do the same thing at Koshien or other things. I don't think it's that uh, sinister. It may just be someone trying to bot. It may very well be that. But um, it is still crazy to see that. Like it says here, empty views is nothing in the long run. That's why their live streaming money is drying up too. Talk about Niji Sanji as well. Numbers don't look like real people at all, honestly. The fact that they stay level for the entirety of it, uh, except for moments where they suddenly spike upwards, really indicates something as foul is being done. Why don't the Chinese bot farm they pay to do this? It's another India engagement thing. YouTube is busy banning people for clipping VTubers. And who's using ad block? Not the booting problem. 300 cases cicadas. The ass graph is sussy as hell, but it's probably not related to Niji at all. Um, the V stats. The stream was 3D. Birthday stream for Haru Luna. Uh, oh, uh, Kirishima Haru and Kirishima Luna of Heiwa. So, oh, that plateau. That plateau is very much a uh, a botting thing. That is very much uh, something like it started with nothing. Here, you can kind of see like if they stayed around here, it'd be like, oh, okay, it's not so bad. Uh, but like not even... The thing is, they went a little too far. If if they were doing body, not gonna fully accuse anybody of that. But if they were doing body, um, it is a little crazy because it going from 40k to 140k uh, for a channel that doesn't really have too many subscribers uh, is kind of weird. And it looks like even um, even uh, V stats kind of corrected the numbers to 44k, I think peak or 88k peak instead of 140k. Um, the Haru Luna channel, uh, it's Heiwa is apparently that that group. From the Heiwa group, I guess. Of course, there's no evidence this was done by Niji. However, since most of the sudden spikes on fluctuation CCV are Niji streams, the suspicion seems to have been raised this time. And I hope for the sake of Haru Luna, they don't do this again. Like, because the company, I think this is the company more than anything, whatever company they're a part of, uh, the Pachinko Game Machine Company. They just want the CCV to look high to possibly get more people in because when it's a bit, bit of a psychological move, when there's a lot of people viewing stuff, you want to be a part of the group. So getting people to, to view it as well is kind of a thing. It doesn't help the actual livers. It doesn't help them at all. It actually makes them look worse. So that's why I hope the company stops doing this. Support your livers instead. Instead of spending money making bots, support your livers and give them the tools they can to benefit and to actually grow. Welcome back everyone to the VTuber Showcase where I try to give back to the community, the VTuber community that's given so much to me by showcasing some VTubers that you may have missed at some point in time and, you know, just interesting ones that I find here and there. Every single VTuber, whether I look at them or not, deserve a watch and it deserves some time. Of course, VTubers, there are so many that I can't keep up with them, but I'm trying to show you which, whatever I can. We have Lillian, who is uh, part of Blue Jump's first generation Dragon Maid. Uh, Blue Jump EN is a small organization. They are very, very small. It looks like in the sense of they are trying to create a new thing. <clears throat> I just saw her and was like, eh, she's interesting. Let's take a look and see all the wonderful things she has out here for everybody. So let's take a look at... Um, they have their YouTube channel, which is primarily covers from what it looks like. They have their uh, Twitch channel, which I'm going to show you a clip of what they have here. And they, they do some singing. They do some singing. Of course, I can only have it that long for that. Let's go to the mood section. What is that? Detecting massive energy signature in the room cannot identify. It has tentacles. I don't like it. it what? So there we go. It has powers. It has powers. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're... <laughs> the tentacle thing is definitely a thing that, that pops up on occasion when it comes to, of course, all of these things. And they are uh, Dragon Maid, who's at your service. Uh, Lillian, Blue Jump's first generation Dragon Maid, mostly stream games and chatting, but also make music and ASMR content. Their birthday is May 12th. I showed you their Twitch and Twitter and YouTube and everything like that. So you guys can take a look. They, of course, they're Blue Jump EN. Of course, take a look at their socials down below if you want a to look at, take a look at this uh, Dragon Maid VTuber. And thank you so much, Lydian, for being a part of this VTuber showcase. 
That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.